Hi guys, BTEC here. Today I'm going to show you how to use lossless scaling to increase FPS on low-end devices. In my case, I'm using this Acer laptop from 2017, which has an 8th gen Intel Core i7 processor, paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA MX130 graphics card. This CPU is only 15 watt, so it's hard to squeeze much power out of it. It was sort of a mid-range device when it came out, but definitely not a gaming laptop. Still, it can handle a couple of games from before 2015 at around 60 FPS. After that, it struggles. But today, I'll show you how to play some newer games that normally wouldn't hit 60 FPS on this device. First, you'll need to download a software called Lossless Scaling. It's very cheap and totally worth the money. I've made a couple of videos about this software already. If you're interested, check them out by clicking the pop-up button or using the link in the description. By the way, if you guys like this kind of content, please help me out by subscribing. It means a lot. Back to the video. First, I'll show you how this laptop runs games natively. Here's the Witcher 3 OG version running at 30 FPS with a mix of high and normal settings at 720p. If you want more FPS, you'll have to reduce the settings to low, but even then it's still pretty tough. So to get 60 FPS, open up lossless scaling. These are the settings I'm using. Make sure to choose the preferred GPU as your integrated GPU. If you're running purely on the iGPU or DGPU, you don't need to change this. Just remember, choosing the same GPU for frame generation can reduce your base frame rate. In this case, using the iGPU won't reduce it. Now, there are a couple of ways to use frame generation. The first is fixed mode. This gives you lower input lag, but the frame rate might dip below 60 FPS at times. The second is adaptive mode. This keeps the frame rate stable at 60 FPS, but you'll feel more input lag. Let me show you how to use frame generation in fixed mode. First, run the game in borderless windowed or windowed mode. In lossless scaling, keep the multiplier at 2 and reduce the flow scale to around 50. This gives better performance. If your device has more power, you can increase it. You'll also need some kind of FPS locking tool to keep things stable. I'm using MSI Afterburner's Rivatuner for this. I'll lock the frame rate to 30 FPS like this. Now the game will upscale to 1080p, since the laptop has a 1080p screen. And the frame rate will boost to 60 FPS with generated frames. You can see the total frame rate, including generated frames, in the top left corner. This feels way smoother than native 30 FPS. Now, if you hit a GPU-intensive part of the game and your dedicated GPU can't keep a stable 30 FPS, the total frame rate with generated frames will also fall below 60. For example, now I'm getting around 25 FPS natively and 50 FPS with frame generation. To fix this and maintain 60 FPS, switch to Adaptive Mode in Lossless Scaling. Open the app, select Adaptive Mode, and remove the FPS lock. Then hit the Scale button. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a stable 60 FPS with generated frames, even though my base FPS is around 25. It feels super smooth, but you will notice a bit more input lag compared to fixed mode. If that doesn't bother you, it's a really great experience. Now I'll try the same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2. It runs at around 20 FPS at 720p on the lowest settings. If you want lower input lag, go with fixed frame generation mode at 2x. Here, it's giving me 40 FPS. But if you want a smoother experience, switch to adaptive mode, targeting 60. Now it feels much smoother. Just keep in mind that generating frames from such a low base frame rate can introduce some visual artifacts. But if you can overlook that, it works really well. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.